this episode we'll start the Triumph project! Hi folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and we're finally starting a new series of episodes where we'll be creating a super custom out of a Triumph Speed Triple. I'll be documenting the project from beginning to end, so I've decided to divide the process into four main sections. The first section will document the bodywork, so the creation of the tail out of sheet metal. In section two, we'll take care of the design and machining of new parts I've created for this project, made out of billet aluminum. Section 3 will be all about the electronics needed to power the new parts, including the replacement of the existing instrument cluster. And finally, in part number 4, the final section will take care of painting, assembly and unveiling in front of the bike's owner. Hopefully he will like it, <laughs> so finger crossed. Since I just mentioned painting, let me start from the beginning. You may remember my friend Christian, the airbrush artist that did the paint job on my gas tank. Ciao, sono Cristian Lauriti di Griart di Roma. Well, right after we were done with the shooting of that episode, he asked me if I wanted to work with him in his next project, the creation of a custom bike based on a Triumph motorcycle. <laughs> I was honored to be asked to work with such a veteran of the Italian custom scene, and I immediately accepted, although crossing my fingers and hoping to be up to the task. Dopo aver visto i lavori di Chez sulla propria moto, ho pensato che il rischio di lavorare con un non professionista era un rischio calcolato. Magari ci sarà bisogno di qualche rifinitura, ma sono sicuro che il risultato sarà sicuramente molto creativo. And that is how we got started in this adventure, custom Chez and Criart together. When I went to Christian Lab to start the project, he was making the bike all nice and clean. Oggi iniziamo con visualizzare quello che vogliamo ottenere. Possiamo dire che questo è il momento in cui si delinea il piano di azione. To have a fair idea of what we have to deal with, we have to take the bike apart and expose the frame. With Gianmario's help, we remove the seat and all the plastic pieces. Ciao, io sono Gianmario, sono l'assistente di Cristian. Lavoriamo insieme da 5 anni. Once all the plastic components are removed, we can finally see what are we dealing with. The idea is to make it a one-seater and create a minimalistic rear end. The battery seems to be the object with the biggest footprint, so I immediately begin to find possible alternative positions. Beside the battery, the other candidates for relocation are the fuse box and the cooling liquid tank. The area enclosed in the frame under the current location could be a solution, but we'll see. I also found quite a lot of space under the gas tank, and I think that will come in handy. Riuscendo a riallocare un po' di roba lì sotto e spostando avanti la batteria, potremo guadagnare lo spazio necessario sul retro. Now that we have removed the instrument cluster and the trademark lights, we are ready to decide once and for all what the hell are we going to do with this thing. Puoi fare modelli grafici quanto ti pare, ma per visualizzare il risultato, credo che il miglior modo sia avere la moto davanti. Devi capire cosa vuoi e che cosa vuole il proprietario. Con Chez abbiamo speso un paio d'ore a guardare, discutere e poi riguardare, finché non abbiamo deciso come procedere. Once we've made up our mind, the bike arrives to my home shop, where Polsky and I immediately start figuring out how to transform the idea we came up with into reality. 
L'idea di lavorare su una moto da strada mi è sempre piaciuta e non c'è niente meglio di una bella birretta per far circolare le idee. Sarà un gran lavoretto. Sì, no, ma l'idea è un'altra. Quindi in realtà noi tagliamo... Non vorrei che è troppo dritto. Qua. So after getting Polsky on the same page as Christian and I, we start to mark the first cutting lines to shorten the frame. To do so, I use some painter's tape. Remember to measure twice and cut once. So many times I've screwed up because of faulty measures. So nowadays I check even more than twice. Then all the cables are moved out of the way and the seat lock is disassembled so that I can use it in the final product. Some more measuring and we are ready to start cutting. Some of you might remember the last summer while in Vermont an old Triumph totally ripped my Achilles tendon trying to kickstart it. So I won't deny a bit of sadistic satisfaction while thinking of mutilating this specimen. <laughs> It is time for revenge. Questo è il punto di non ritorno, incrociamo le dita. I start by cutting the tail of the frame, I might use it in the end, so I'm gonna keep it aside. Then it's time to remove the length of tubing we don't need anymore. Now that aluminum or aluminium, since we're talking about a Triumph frame, <laughs> anyway, now that the aluminium excess tubing has been removed, it's time to shorten the plastic box as well. Later, I'll figure out how to close it back. But for now, it's demolition time! Don't do anything that makes you happy. It will pay up one day. You will get your share of More touches, well. <sighs> the next job is a bit more delicate. The removal of the pieces that we don't need anymore. Like the original muffler support or the passenger's peg support. For this type of precision work, I need the skills of Polsky Rage. Ces mi chiama il chirurgo del frullino. Lui queste cose proprio non, non le può fare. È un po' come saldare. Everyone should know its limits, and I do. For this type of work, Polsky is the best. And on this project, we need only the best. While Polsky works on grinding the frame, I would like to remind you guys that this channel exists only because of you and your support. Thank you so much. We're going to keep posting English videos on this channel for the next few months, but we're also in the process of separating the Italian channel from the English one, because YouTube is really not yet equipped to tailor to the needs of a multi-language channel. So, in the next few months, we'll be moving all the English videos to a new channel called Custom Bike. I invite all of you guys to please subscribe to it by clicking right here or on the link in the description. Since this will be a transitional time for us, we can use all the help you can give us by sharing the new channel and the videos on your social networks. So I thank you very much and now let's get back to the Triumph project. All right, Polsky is done and the passenger pegs are now officially history. Now, since I want the tail end to be pretty thin, we need to do some cleanup. I mark real well the areas to be removed and proceed with finalizing the frame modifications. That's it, I think the demolition is done short but sweet 
Now it's time to start rebuilding this bike and I begin with the designer's best friend, cardboard. It's the best material to quickly create a model of what it will be, so to spot possible design flaws and fix them before fabrication. To close the tail, I'll fabricate a tail light housing out of aluminum with my CNC. So, I make a mock-up shape with the cardboard so I can visualize the next step. The sheet metal work. The cardboard comes into play one more time, this time a thinner kind to allow for easy folding and bending around the curves. Once mocked up, it will be replaced with one millimeter thick cold rolled steel. After shaping it on the tubes, it's time to detail it with a sharpie, right on the bike. I think this is the best way to create new parts and making sure that the lines flow together. A pair of scissors make it easy for the side cover to come to life and, considering more and more elements along the way, the design evolves into its final shape. I want to keep all functionalities of the bike, so I make sure that the keyhole for the seat release is easily accessible. A few final touch-ups and the cardboard model is ready to be transferred onto the sheet metal. Polsky is making space for the new lithium battery that we have decided to go for. Thanks to its reduced size, we can keep almost everything in place, relocating only just a few things. It's now time for the sheet metal work. First thing I do is transfer the design from the cardboard to the metal. Then I add a bunch of space around it. You know, you can always cut stuff out, right? After some cutting with a pair of shears, I'm ready to give this flat piece of metal the shape I want. As you might know, in Roma Custom Bike, we don't always buy tools. So, to bend this part, I'm gonna use a bunch of stuff I have laying around. A metal tube clamped to the workbench and another leftover piece of pipe to push the shit down. To finish the bend, I use my very useful metal shaping hammers. Now, with the basic band done, I can place the part on the bike and verify that I'm going in the right direction. I also mark a few areas as reference for the next tool. This is a shrinker and its counterpart is the stretcher. Many of you might know this tool, but for those who don't, the shrinker has two visors that grab metal and push it towards the center. His job is to get the particles of material closer together, shortening the side while making it thicker and allowing for compound 3D curves and bends. The stretcher works exactly the opposite way. The teeth grab the metal on the two sides and pull it apart thinning it and consequently making it longer. You have to be really, really careful when using these tools, especially the stretcher, cause if too much pressure is applied, it could shred the piece. Non li conoscevo questi attrezzi, li ho visti in officina per almeno sei mesi e non sapevo che fosse così efficace. With the part on the bike, looks like it's coming real well. A few more details to go and we're gonna be good. Now I want to tackle the lower front curve. I want it to curve inward to give more rigidity to the part and give it a more refined look. I start this band with a shrinker, but given the very tight radius of the curve, I think that a curved anvil and a shaping hammer are the best way to go. Oh, 
All right, the left side is done. Now I just have to match it with the right side. And that's the hardest part. But once I've done, I can really start to see the outcome of our hard labor. Now, the two parts have to be joined to the bottom plate. And for this job, once again, I'm gonna recruit Polski's expert hand. Le cose più rischiose le fa sempre fare a me e poi se faccio danni si incazza pure. No, Polski, I let you do this thing because I respect you and I value your work. Now guys, don't you do what we do. Always use protection when welding and grinding. Doing these things can be really dangerous for your face and your eyes. We usually do use protection, but sometimes we forget. After all, I have to think about the job, the cameras, the lights, the video, so forget about it. I'm half justified over here. <laughs> After tucking the parts in a few points to keep them together, Polsky Rage starts with the actual welding. Quando si saldano materiali così fini è importante tenere a bada la distorsione causata da temperatura. By welding small spots at a time and jumping from one area to another, Polsky makes sure that the geometry of the part stays the same by keeping the temperature down and keeping distortion under control. More heat, more distortion. He has to be patient, but he's saving us so much headaches later. Now we need to bend upward the edge of the bottom plate so that it will fit snugly inside the tail light. Once again, we are using leftover material we find around the shop to bend it upward. And we're using a hammer and a shoe heel anvil. And the tail, it's done. All we have to do now is slide it onto the frame like a sock and see if it came out the way I want it. Sono molto soddisfatto come è venuto fuori. Wow, 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 you guys! To be the first time that we are venture into the world of metal shaping with this level of complexity, I have to say that it came out real nice. I hope that Christian will be happy with the result, but for now, I'm not gonna tell him anything. I want him to see the whole bike done all together. Con Chez non mi preoccupo, sono sicuro che il prodotto sarà sicuramente di qualità. Magari un po' coatto, ma di qualità. Sì, questa è una moto da strada, non è Harley. Magari un po' coatto. Ok, inizia a preoccuparmi. Christian, don't you be worried, forget about it. The flamethrower will install as an optional. <laughs> And you guys, please don't miss the next episodes where we'll be designing and building the new parts from scratch out of billet aluminum with my CNC. And then the development of all the Arduino based electronics that we'll use to power and control the new accessories. And last but definitely not least, the paint job, assembly and unveiling. <laughs> Remember to sign up for the new English only channel custom bike and please share the videos on Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus to help us grow because that's how we manage to bring you new and exciting episodes every month. I want to thank Christian from CreArt for the great opportunity. I am Custom Chess from Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you in the next episode.